you're looking at a diagram and a map, this is an updated version of what I've been showing people for five, six years as proof that there's a brown dwarf in the solar system or close to the solar system, close enough to affect tectonics, solar behavior, debris fields, and we always heard about pickup ions found in different parts of our solar system. Pickup ions are ions that are not created by the sun. The sun can create pickup ions because it picks up particles from outer space, from outside. It focuses in a, a second source of particles and then ionizes those particles, accelerates those particles, and sometimes consumes those particles. So when you alter the sun's behavior like that, <clears throat> you're going to affect climate. You're going to force your climate with sun. And more and more people are beginning to connect and use the word solar and sun when describing heat, wildfires, drought, and you start seeing the word sun more often than, than you used to. Now, this diagram, you know, we, we had to do several educational videos on what the heck a brown dwarf even was because it sure seemed like there was a heck of a lot of mystery around brown dwarfs that there didn't need to be because uh, we can tell so much through spectroscopy. Uh, we can tell so much about a star, <clears throat> especially one that's close. Now, in larger stars, well, and, and our theory was and that, I mean, it's, it's not a theory. It, it, the brown dwarfs are large red giants that have collapsed. And they've used up all their helium. That means the helium has produced other elements like beryllium, lithium, and then the CNO, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen cycle, um, where you fuse hydrogen with the carbon and nitrogen to form oxygen which then decays back into carbon and so you have this fusion cycle and decay cycle uh, that releases a lot of energy but that's usually found in larger stars stars larger than the Sun hotter than the Sun because it is a chemical reaction or a fusion reaction that is set up and it can be temperature driven so if something were to heat the sun up from external source if something was able to do that then you could push the CNO cycle uh, into play and once you start it it's hard to stop it because it creates so much energy that it's hard to take the temperature down to where the, the cycle reverses itself we don't think that it's being produced in the sun. We don't, we're not seeing the carbon. We're seeing other cosmic rays that that would indicate we're getting carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen from a second source. So when they fly satellites around the sun and the earth mapping the flow of this, they call it interstellar wind, but it's interplanetary. Uh, I mean it's flying through the solar system but notice off to the left of the screen notice the crossing and notice how that shape that pattern shows up in our tail stream in our magnetosphere simulations sometimes the earth has more energy sometimes in the backside or the tail stream of the solar wind than in the front uh, at the bow shock zone and there and that's why you have these these gravitationally focused now those are n partially neutral particles so once they once they get in tight enough to to be stripped of their electrons through intense heat 
and acceleration, then the electrons will try to circle back even tighter. Is that we have all the signs that a brown dwarf that came through our solar system that these particles are interacting in the corona of the sun. We measure the energy coming off the sun. It's increased by thousands of trillions of watts. Um, and, and that's just an increase. That's not. There have been warnings stated by official sources uh, that, you know, it's the least they could do. But um, there really needs to be an intervention plan to deal with this cosmic radiation. It has pushed us to an extinction, um, no turning point in terms of food chain. And, and if, if that's the case, um, I always said that you, if we were on the brink of something like that, that you would be able to tell by what the elite do and what their behaviors are. And <clears throat> look around. All I can say is just look around. Keep your ear to the ground and look around. And uh, be good about it, you know. And, but what's bizarre is the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen also can collide with protons. And so you have a lot of particle interaction and particle collisions that release energy, neutrinos, electrons, positrons. Now, when you have a collision that uh, releases positrons, those positrons do not hang out. Uh, they're usually gone in a matter of a second or two because the minute they attract an electron, they annihilate each other, forming pure energy. Some of the highest energy yield you can get from a particle interaction is that between a positron and an electron. So, but those aren't created until there's a particle collision or until there's fusion. So, either way, uh, this interaction is going to happen. And you're going to get that energy released. You're going to get positrons, uh, no matter whether you're talking about a, a fusion reaction set up by a collision, or you're talking about an actual chain reaction where you actually um, collide atoms at a high enough energies to break it open, so to speak, and release all of these particles and all of this energy. But the fact that they're picking up CNO, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, in with the helium is a, a perfect signature um, that you would expect from a, a once upon a time red giant or large star. But the thing that you don't hear about is the lithium and the beryllium. L lithium and beryllium are very, very common, but they degrade very, very easily. Again, when they do, releasing energy. So when, when the beryllium decays, when the lithium decays, they can decay back into helium. So there's, there's such a large helium signature in the solar system that they've taken all the helium instruments out. They, you can't find them. I mean, and you're talking more than one instrument, that's for sure. Now, so, so it's related to what's happening today. Uh, we were warning about these type of climate consequences and food shortages. We've talked about this a long time. And, you know, and, and I find it um, a, ironic that some of, it, some of this does tie into scriptures, you know. But if you had knowledge of a solar system cycle, then a prediction really isn't a prediction. And that's all of our predictions really are uh, basically a trend that has been extended outward. So we didn't invent the trend. I didn't invent the trend. You didn't invent the trend. The trend is set up by physics and 
and chemistry and energy and these trends we can just measure and try to understand so you won't find any beryllium and lithium in the focusing cone Thank you.